Back on the ML Sports Platter, Mike Lindsley here, flying solo. Going to do a little Stanley Cup Finals preview. It's all brought to you by our great friends over at the Al and Angus Pub. Hey, home of the best star in Angus Burger in town. If you're in and around Central New York before and after all the big events, and of course, you can go see them at Taste of Syracuse coming up in a few days as well. The Al and Angus Pub is a proud ML Sports Platter sponsor and the official pub of the platter as well. And a tip of the cap, thank you to CH Insurance, Elevate Fitness of Syracuse, and our title sponsor, Stanley Law Offices. Stanley Law Offices together, they'll work to get you the maximum reward. So I wanted to spend, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes here on the camera and, and really break down this Stanley Cup Finals. And, you know, the first thing I'm looking at here is, you know, and, and these are in really, you know, no, no particular order. Number one is that the best player in the sport is in the championship series. That to me is, is tremendous. I mean, when you think about Patrick Mahomes and you think about the Connor McDavid's and you think about the Steph Curry's and you think about the Shoei Otani's, those kinds of players, the league benefits when the best of the best is in the final set, right? Um, Honestly, that's how if you go back decades and decades, you can you can you know talk to my man Scott Petoniak about this. But Mickey Mantle was in the World Series all the time. You know, the darling center fielder with the five tools from Oklahoma and the great looks and the golden boy hair and all this sort of thing. He became an American icon in the World Series and wearing the pinstripes as a center fielder for the New York Yankees. If he's not in the world series all the time, he's probably not even close to the face of baseball, right? Maybe it's somebody else. Maybe it's Willie Mays or someone else, but Mickey Mantle, I mean, Yankees pinstripes, good looks, country boy, all that stuff. Fine. You know, you check all the boxes there, but if you're sitting at home in October, somebody else is on that stage. Right. And obviously TV came about during that, that era as well. So that helped them. But you think about the big time, big time stars. I mean, think about if Michael Jordan had the same career, but he only played in like one NBA finals. He might be Charles Barkley. Instead, he won six rings and he's he's also the greatest player of all time. But in most cases, the greatest player in their sports history or on the short list of two or three or at worst top five, they've competed for and or won a championship. They have. Tom Brady in the NFL right now, he's been to 10 Super Bowls. He's won seven rings. You look at Patrick Mahomes, he's in the middle possibly of a dynasty, has already got multiple rings. Michael Jordan won six rings, was on the big stage. Now, Derek Jeter's an interesting one. He won five rings, but probably only one or two years his entire career was he considered the best player in Major League Baseball. I thought he got robbed of the MVP in 2006. Should have gone to Justin Morneau. I uh, should have gone to Jeter instead of Justin Morneau. But he was ultimately a face of baseball, an arguable face of baseball, uh, only for a couple of years, an arguable best player of baseball. But that was a very rare case. Why was it a rare case? Hello. He played in the postseason every single year. And that's what baseball people are clamoring for right now in terms of Shohei Otani finally pitching for the L.A. Dodgers while well, playing for the L.A. Dodgers, not pitching this year, uh, straight up hitting as a DH and all the rest. And we'll see. Maybe he'll pitch here in the very near future. The point is, when you get the best player using the super superlative in the sport or an all timer, top player, top two, three player, top five player at worst, it only services that player better. It helps the sport that much more. In golf, you don't worry about it. In tennis, you don't worry about it. They're individual sports. They're going to be in the majors no matter what. Serena, Martina Navratilova, Djokovic, Nadal, Federer, Tiger, they're all going to be in those, in those majors and grand slams anyway. What you're looking for is in these team sports, you know, you, you got to have the best of the best at some point arrive in the championship. And I think it's pretty cool that Connor McDavid, the best player in the sport, is in the Stanley Cup Finals. That's number one. The best player in the sport is in the final set. Number two is we have a Canadian team in the finals with a chance to raise Lord Stanley for the first time since 1993 when the Montreal Canadiens won the Stanley Cup backed by goaltender Patrick Waugh. 
This would be an epic thing for the country of Canada, an epic thing for the sport. It would be a monumental deal when you go back here. That was 30 years ago or so, 30, 31 years ago. And Canada's been thirsty for it ever since. Now, we've seen some runs here. Remember 2011 with the Canucks. We've seen Edmonton here with this McDavid group knocking on the door, trying to make that deep playoff run, right? We've seen some other the Canadians in the COVID year. We've seen some different things happening with these Canadian clubs, but none of them able to get up over the hump. We've seen Calgary, I think it was 15, 16 years ago with that Aginla group. So, you know, the Maple Leafs always stink up the joint, but there have been some different situations where these Canadian clubs have had opportunities to get to a cup final and win a cup final. This one here is as good a chance as any, only because the Edmonton Oilers have the best player in Connor McDavid. They've got dry sidle and they're playing a different style, which leads me to the next thing, the matchup between the Panthers and the Oilers. It's going to be fascinating to watch. We've seen Edmonton. You can talk all day long about the big four, McDavid, Dreisaitl, Nugent Hopkins, and of course, Hyman, who scored 50 plus goals this season. They've typically been a high flying team score on the power play, one pass, two pass outlet. They're up the ice. Next thing you know, they're shooting on your goaltender in the blink of an eye. They've been that team mostly during this McDavid Dreisaitl era. And that's gotten them some success, but not success like this getting to a cup final. The reason they're here is because of Stuart Skinner. They've had better goaltending. They have much better depth. And they're doing the little things that they didn't do before. They're winning in the corners. They're blocking shots. uh, They're winning along the walls. The grit, the blood, sweat, and tear determination type of thing. They're doing way more than that. And their defense is also better and deeper as well. In other words, they're built better as a team led by the high-flying scoring of a McDavid, Dreisaitl, and a Hyman, and a Nugent Hopkins. They've scored some big goals in the playoffs, but let's be honest. Game six against Dallas, they never could win the 2-1 game consistently in the postseason. Now, they can do that. And they still had their big guy scoring. That Connor McDavid goal, the first one of the game and the 2-1 win over Dallas in game six, I didn't know a human being could do that. And I've seen a lot of Connor McDavid. I've seen him in person three times. I've seen all the elite players the last four decades in person. In fact, I've said this for a long time. If you're my age and you've been a sports fan since around five, six years old, you could argue that you've seen some, you know, the best in every single sport both coaches and players. You could argue it. You could argue it. The only one that you can't probably argue at my age is is like, some might say, well, Barry Bonds, whatever, but I couldn't put like a Barry Bonds and a Ripken, for as amazing the elite as they are, you know, a Ripken, Bonds, Jeter, a lot of these other players that we saw. I don't know. There's just something about that Mays, Mantle, Ruth, Aaron, you know, that Frank Robinson, you know, Stan Musial. I don't know if you can, you know, the best player of all time in baseball resides in my lifetime, but In a lot of these other sports, you can argue it for sure. And that's a whole other show for another day. But I've seen Gretzky, Lemieux, Iserman, Messier, Yager. I've seen all these guys in person, man. Ovechkin, Crosby, multiple times, McDavid. Seen them all. And we've never seen anything like Connor McDavid. The size, the speed, the strength, still the youth. I think he's 27 years old. And the ability, the stick handling within that skill set that I mentioned with the word skill. This guy is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, he had the 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 stick on the forehand, waited, rail, realized that Miro Heiskanen was on the weak side there, kind of toe drag up, down, around while people are turning, chasing. Do I hit him? Do I not? Do I do I check him? Do I uh, swipe the stick? Do I tip the puck? They're all doing little things to try, and he just moves across easy after the toe drag in, out, backhand up over the left shoulder of Ottinger, and it was a I mean, it's as spectacular a goal as you could ever see by anybody in NHL history. Honest to God. I mean, it was unbelievable. And we're talking like Canada Cup 87, Gretzky, Lemieux on the same line kind of stuff here. I mean, it was it was something of epic proportion by Connor McDavid. So he scores that goal, and they win 2-1. They won with the goaltending. Skinner made a, a, a ton. I think he had 30-something, 30 30-plus 30 saves in that game. 
They won two one. They block shots. Look at the last two minutes. It was frantic. It was crazy. It was it was it was a a frenzy to try to stop the puck and get it out. But the Oilers are able to do that. So I'm interested to see the Oilers with this new style, deeper, more blood, guts, sweat, tears, all that sort of thing. Better goaltending, better defense. Bouchard's had an amazing playoff across the board. Some of these other guys have given you splashes and then they disappear. The CCs and the Darnell. Darnell Nurse has had a lot of horrible games. But Bouchard's been amazing. But a lot of these guys have had like these, you know, they're good for 20 minutes and they kind of go away. And Bouchard mostly has been really, really good. I mean, he's been great pinching in, scoring on the power play, pen kill. Their penalty penalty kill has been outrageously great. Um, but with this collection of defense and with this collection of uh, will to win, the blood, sweat, tear, guts, uh, determination, all the rest, more more depth plus Skinner. And by the way, that depth, really they out depth, if you want to say here, they they did that to Dallas. I mean, I thought Dallas was the deepest team in the NHL. Not so fast, my friends, as Lee Corso would say. Uh, Edmonton with all of these new things, these new intangibles, going up against a Florida team that wears you the hell out. Now we get to the Panthers. The Florida Panthers are a, a nightmare to play against. They are a top six headache with all the guys moving downhill on you. Reinhardt, Bennett, Verhage, Kachuk, Barkov's an absolute monster. And how about that second line that's been absolutely fantastic as well? When you look at uh, Tarasenko, you look at Lundell, and you look at Liskinen. Uh, uh, Th those three guys have been absolutely unbelievable. That, that third line has given people all kinds of fits. The Panthers move downhill. They keep coming at you. <clears throat> they suffocate you. And as they're suffocating you, they're getting better on their end. They're a nightmare to play against. Their defense is terrific. And, oh, by the way, Sergei Bobrovsky has been through this little uh, this little time here before with the Stanley Cup playoffs, okay? This is a team, by the way, that went to the Cup Final last year. And a lot of times it can go one way or the other. You go to the Cup Final, pure exhaustion. You get into a final uh, or you get into a series the next, the next year in the playoffs, and it's just pure exhaustion, pure cup hangover. Uh, you just can't get through that first round or the second round, whatever. You just can't get back. It's just too difficult. The other way is you're working on adrenaline. You're healthier. You're deeper, which is all that stuff is true compared to last year, even for Florida. This is even better team than last year, which is amazing. And you learn how to lose before you learn how to win. That happens all the time in pro sports. Teams look at the Bulls of the 90s, losing to the Pistons. They figure it out, right? They get Pippin. They do their thing. Off they go, dynasty. We see teams, sometimes they lose. They learn how to lose before they learn how to win. The Red Wings were like that in the 90s. Voila, they win multiple cups. Steve Eiserman, Fedorov in that group. Vernon, Osgood, the Russian Five, all the way through it. They pick up free agents, obviously, Chelios, Shannon, and they kept it going, of course. But it was that group. That loss. I mean, think about the the rivalry games with the Avalanche and all the rest, right? Like until it was what was 97, 98, they repeated as cup champs, but Colorado in 96 won it, right? Sometimes you just there, I think it was 96. I think Colorado, I think Colorado won uh, that that uh conference final over them. Let me see. Western conference finals hockey. I'm pretty sure it was Colorado over Detroit. I mean, they played basically every year. Um, I, was it six games? I think it was six games. Um, I'm going over to my – yeah, six games. There you go. Colorado over Detroit, four to two. So, you know, but but then Detroit won back-to-back -back cups. I mean, think about that for a second. You go to the Western Conference Finals three years in a row and you win two Stanley Cups after – all of that. Look at the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tampa Bay Lightning. I mean, you know, uh, beaten early in the playoffs, losing in the Stanley Cup Finals, and then bang, they go to three straight Stanley Cup Finals. They win two of them. And if it wasn't for an upstart, you know, Nathan McKinnon, Cal McCarr in Colorado, you know, they win three in a row. So it's weird how it works, but it usually works one way or the other where you get back and and, and you learn how to lose and you learn how to win. You get back working on the adrenaline. Maybe you add a piece or two, uh, which – Florida added a ton of guys. I mean, they pick up a Poso. They pick up a bunch of different players. Uh, they're healthier. They're deeper, blah, 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 as I mentioned. Or it can go the other way, right? Like, look at Vegas. Vegas was a Stanley Cup contender this year, again, obviously. But they run into the Stars in the first round. And was it part cup hangover? I don't know. Uh, but the bottom line is 
you know, they, they ran into a, a, a mini juggernaut in the first round. And it was just too hard to get back. So uh, it, it was just too hard to get back for them. So again, it can work one way or the other, but Florida's back and I commend them. I'm really looking forward to though. And this is the final thing I'll say is the Florida style where they took away the likes of Kreider consistently, Zabinijad consistently, Trocheck at times, all, all, all the Ranger superstars, mostly on the top six. I mean, Lafren Lafreniere got his and all the rest, but <clears throat> a lot of the big guns in the power play couldn't work for the Rangers and in and, and, and Florida just suffocating and doing their thing. I'm wondering how that style will work with Edmonton. Can they take away most of the big four the way they play? Nugent Hopkins, Hyman, McDavid, Dreisaitl, especially if Edmonton is to get some power plays, how is that also going to work? Also, on the flip side of that, the style that Edmonton plays, they're high-flying. Look, if they're going to win this series, duh. They're going to need McDavid and Dreisaitl to score. There's no question about it. Depth, goaltending, special teams, and your stars have to be better than their stars. Hyman, Dreisaitl, McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, Evander Kane, they got to be better than that core of Florida that I mentioned before, the Barkovs and the Verhages and Reinhardt and Bennett and all those guys. They got to be better than all of those players, and I get that. Third line versus third line, of course. First versus first, second and second, the matchup start, they got to be better if they want to win the Stanley Cup, ultimately. I get that, but with... Edmonton and with all of the different things that they now have to balance the big time scoring, I'm intrigued to see how that counters Florida and their style and their suffocating and all the rest. How physical does it get? The chipping of the pucks out of the net, the one-on-one -on -one battles, uh, uh, blocking shots, right? Diving in front of those big time slap shots of the Panthers defense and beyond. Um, getting in the way of Bobrovsky, getting in the corners, winning along the walls. How much can Edmonton do? Can they can they equal at least how Florida does it? I, I, I'm not sure. And the final thing about Edmonton, I'm going to pick Florida in seven games in this series, but Edmonton, if Skinner in goal can steal a game or even two, you know, Edmonton's going to win this Stanley Cup. That's the bottom line. At the end of the day, sure, starting pitching, quarterback play, goaltending, those big things, the backbone of how you win championships, no question about it. Goaltending, it's not a Hashik Brodeur, Patrick Wah, Ron Hextall kind of world. Um, you know, Eddie Belfort, Felix Potvin, Jonathan Quick, Henrik Lundqvist kind of world. But we have seen the elite goaltending at times from Bobrovsky. We see it from Shishterkin all the time with the Rangers. Um, you know, we see we saw it from Ottinger a, a lot. Hellebuck crapped the bed for Winnipeg in the playoffs, which actually surprised me. But in this finals, there's a monumental advantage for Bobrovsky in net and for the Florida Panthers. Florida Panthers, it's a big, big gap for the Panthers in goal, Bobrovsky versus Skinner. If Skinner can steal a game, let's say this series is at 2-2. We don't know how it's going to swing. Momentum's going here or it's going there. It's either going to Alberta or it's going to, to, to Florida. At, where is it? You no, know, it's a best of three. What's sustainable? Who went? If Skinner, let's say, were to win that game five, that tilts everything towards Edmonton. If they're tied, or let's say they're down 2-1, and Florida's completely outplaying Edmonton just like they outplayed the Rangers, and it's that Joe Torre swing game. I know it's a baseball reference, but it's the same thing in all sports. You're up. It's not rocket science. You're up 2-1. You win. You're up 3-1. You take a stranglehold. You lose. The other team wins. It's 2-2. It's deadlock. Now it's best of three. 3-1, three, 2-2. Two, two, it's much different. Let's say Edmonton's down 2-1. They're at home. They desperately need to have a win. They are getting outplayed like crazy. Skinner, 35-36, right, with, with saves out of shots. Edmonton wins it. Bang, they're right back in the series. It's those kind of performances. Let's see if Skinner can steal one as well. I'm going to take Florida in this, though, in seven games. I cannot wait for this series. I was hoping it would be. Rangers, right? Media capital of the world. Hockey, I think I think the NHL is even better when, when the Rangers are involved. You get MSG, New York City, uh, more ratings, blah, 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 big market and all the rest. Original six. You go back to 94, Messier, all the comparisons to that season, right? They really need a cup. I mean, the Rangers really need a cup. When you look at the Bruins, even I know the Bruins haven't won one since 2011, but my God, the Rangers have won Stanley Cup since 1940. Can we please stop like with the Rangers here? I know they've gotten into the playoffs a bunch, 
through their history. They've made deep runs. They had Gretzky, Messier at one point. 94 was a special run and all the rest. But when you compare them to Detroit, the history of Montreal, Chicago Blackhawks, can we please stop it with the Rangers? My God, the Tampa Bay Lightning, they've been around since 92. They have three Stanley Cups since 92. The Rangers have one since 1940. Can we please stop? The Wayne Gretzky trade from Edmonton to L.A. opened up the South. It opened up the West. It opened up everywhere. The Kings have gotten more Stanley Cups than the Rangers in just the last, I don't know, 25 years since the Rangers, since 1940. Can we please stop with the Rangers? But I wanted the Rangers in it from the media standpoint. I do kind of like the Rangers. I root for them when the Sabres are out and all the rest. Although now I love the league so much. I'm just, I just watch all, I watch it all. I just, the NHL is absolutely spectacular right now. It's never been better. Speed, skill, strength, size, uh, uh, youth. It's awesome. It really is. Um, but I, I'm going to go Florida in seven games here, but that Skinner factor is an interesting one as well. ML Sports Platter. It's all brought to you by our great friends at Western OTB and Batavia Downs Gaming. Make sure you visit BataviaDownsGaming.com. They've got a great concert series lined up this year, and you can stay and play. Go to 34 Rush and have some dinner at Thurman Thomas's restaurant as well. Ryan Hassenauer should be joining me <clears throat> later in the week to talk some Belmont Steaks, which this year is at Saratoga. A little cheap in, though. A little cheap in with the shortened track, but I'm not even going to dive into that right now. Luckily, I've said it a bunch, they don't have a, a chance at a triple crown because you could you imagine winning a triple crown having the Belmont be shorter? Asterisk galore on that one. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, we'll be talking plenty of Belmont. Still love the horse racing and obviously good grotto. They're going to make some money in Saratoga this week out there with the Belmont Stakes. And then it's just a short time. <clears throat> you go right into the Saratoga racing season as well. So can't wait to talk to Ryan. He's the director of marketing out there. He's a great guest as well. Man, does he know his horse racing. Thanks to Western OTB and Batavia Downs Gaming for their support of the ML Sports Platter. And again, visit BataviaDownsGaming.com for more information on their concert series, staying and playing the uh, casinos, the hotels. It's an awesome place to go hang out. BataviaDownsGaming.com. And a tip of the cap thank you as well to Stumble and Monkey Brewing Company, Mars Motors, RV Source of Central New York, and Stanley Law Offices, the title sponsor of the program, Stanley Law Offices together. They'll work to get you the maximum reward. As I always tell you, enjoy the games.